A little girl suddenly realized that old man next to her was no longer alive. She had just seen him lying in a coffin. The girl was terrified by the scene in front of her eyes. Turning her head to see, she was perplexed as to what this was all about. At this point, the old man came over to the girl. Could you do me a favor? She is my wife. We've been together for 26 years. I was gone so fast that I didn't have time to say goodbye to her. I didn't even get a chance to tell her how much I adored her. Can you help me? How can I tell her to make her believe that's what you say? Please tell her that I hope she continues to be the same. Every Friday night, drink a bottle of champagne. Then, as on the previous days, sit under the starry sky and silently pray. Assure her that she will never be lonely. She'll get it as soon as she hears it. The little girl conveyed to the elderly woman these words. The elderly woman broke into tears in an instant. Following that, the old man likewise softly exited the human realm. Time flew by, and this little girl had grown into an adult. Her name was Melinda, and that day was her wedding day. Suddenly, a compass symbol emerged outside the window. Melinda's husband inquired as to whether she had recently seen any ghosts. Melinda did not want to detract from the wedding atmosphere. So she just lied that she was not concentrated. But as soon as she walked away, a soldier in an ancient uniform arrived at the window. Melinda awoke in the middle of the night, and her husband, Jim, knew she had had another nightmare. Because Jim was worried about his wife, he advised Melinda not to continue helping souls. Don't let this exhaust you. Melinda agreed with a smile. However, she was gracious so she couldn't neglect them. That night, Thunder woke Melinda awake. She walked downstairs after she realized Jim wasn't in bed. The canvas covering the roof had been blown away by the wind. So Jim was going onto the roof to repair it. He asked that Melinda went back to bed first. However, as she turned around, she was hit by the soldier. Melinda recoiled in terror. I need your help. You should not come to my house. This is not acceptable. I implore you, I need to go home. My wife is pregnant. I'm not sure whether I can help you. What is your name? Paul Adams. I'm a sergeant from Fort Driscoll. The next day, Melinda almost hit a white dog while driving. She then parked the car and walked towards the place where the dog had vanished. That was a statue of two soldiers. She then lowered her look to the writing on the steel below. Vietnam War, Paul Adams went missing in June 1972. As a result, Melinda went to the Association of Demobilized War Veterans. She asked the person in charge here, Joe, for assistance, and he agreed right away. Melinda sensed something was wrong as she looked at the woman in front of her. So she turned away quickly. Can you see me? Don't ignore me. I see you, but this isn't the time. I simply need a little help. The key of the safe is in the pocket of the blue raincoat. What should I say to him? What will he think? I'm sorry, but I've been stuck here for a long time. I thought all of the ways I might tell him. Please help me. Melinda was so difficult to talk to him. However, the other party did not appear to understand what she was saying. Melinda had no choice except to tell directly to Joe. His wife asked her to say that. The key of the safe was hidden inside the blue raincoat. Melinda left without waiting for him to respond. At that time, the wife was crying happy tears. She looked at Joe, who was still standing there, perplexed. Melinda arrived at Paul's house after following Joe's directions. A compass appeared in her hand as soon as the car came to a halt. Not only that, but it also pointed forward. Melinda stepped out of the car and approached a man. Unexpectedly, he was Michael, Paul's son. Melinda lied about gathering information from Vietnam War veterans. And asked Michael about Paul. Michael became excited when she mentioned his father. He described his father as a respected hero. And he hoped that if Melinda discovered any information regarding his father, she would contact him. Melinda gladly agreed. But, before she left, she discovered that Michael's wife was also pregnant. She couldn't bear telling Michael that. His father's soul, covered in mud, appeared at his door. Paul told me that his wife was pregnant. However, he doesn't appear to realize. The pregnant woman is his son's wife, not his wife. I don't get it. Okay. Listen. When something significant occurs in a family, for instance, the birth of a child, that will cause the world of spirits to react accordingly and reawaken some of the deceased souls. That is exactly why Paul appeared. The next day, Melinda met Paul in the city. They walked through a graveyard. Melinda questioned Paul about what had occurred back then. Paul tried to recall what had happened back then. He was in a helicopter at that time, and the enemy attacked him. The helicopter began to fall. Meanwhile, he noticed a magnificent waterfall. She took Paul to his gravestone while they were talking. No way, my wife is pregnant. Three months after you were reported missing, she gave birth to a son. Your son is 33 years old, and his wife is going to give birth as well. Did I really lose out on so much time? How is my wife doing? I'm so sorry. He said that your wife had passed away not long ago. 
Paul begged Melinda to help him in meeting his wife. But Melinda expressed regret. She could only see souls that had yet to be freed. He immediately begged Melinda to tell his son the truth about his death. Melinda went to Michael's house and told him the truth. She even gave Paul's compass to Michael. Unexpectedly, Michael saw her as a fraud and evicted her from the house. Melinda complained bitterly that she did it all for nothing. And she told that Michael might contact the Pentagon to inquire about it. Melinda was depressed when she came home, and all she wanted to do was drink some wine. Fortunately, her husband still consoled her. At this time, Michael also drove to the front of Melinda's house. Michael contacted the Pentagon. Based on Melinda's information, it was discovered that his father, Paul Adams, was deployed on a helicopter mission 20 years ago. Currently, the US and Vietnamese militaries were cooperating to conduct a search to see if anything new could be discovered. Michael asked once again about Melinda's sources for this information. Melinda said that she understood it was difficult for Michael to accept these things. But his father had told her. Paul's soul also arrived at this time. He asked Melinda to tell his son. Have you still kept the last letter your father sent to your mother? In the letter, he said to his wife that his photo should be placed in front of the cradle. Michael finally believed it after hearing this. Michael was overwhelmed with emotions when he discovered that his father was with him. Paul wanted Melinda to tell his son that. Witnessing Michael mature made him very proud. Mom never forgot dad, Michael said. My mother told me stories about you every night. Mom has imprinted a picture of you in my mind. This makes me miss you more and more. Paul's eyes welled up when he heard this. I've seen your wife, and I'm about to see my grandchild. I will always be there for you. I will definitely find your remains, dad. No. You should go home and be with your wife and children, he advised Michael. Your wife is in desperate need of you right now. This is more important. When the baby is born, you must experience the joy of becoming a father. Don't let any moment pass you by. Melinda had been touched by the father's love. Your father wants you to know he will always dwell in your heart, she added, choking. When you're confused and don't know what to do, look at the compass, he will be back. When he learned that his father wished to join him on the stroll, Michael asked, as if he were a child, is dad there? Paul immediately placed his hand on his son's shoulder. Michael seemed to have sensed his father's affection for him. That winter, the remains of Paul Adams was eventually discovered. What do you think about your grandson? Very adorable. After seeing that, I feel it's time for me to leave. What did you see? My wife, she's over there by the tree, calling me to come there. She's still as beautiful as she was when I enlisted. 